morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Steve Guntz. I work for the State of Minnesota Vocational Rehabilitation Services. I'm very pleased to be here, and we'll see how well I can work this PowerPoint. I want to um, thank my colleagues, um, uh, Marie McAvoy and Marcy in the back, who are the brains behind this PowerPoint, if I don't drop it all on the floor. And actually, um, my colleagues at Lindot, Meredith Biddle, and Kristen Derby, who I stole some of this uh, PowerPoint from. Um, and it was actually for an employee resource group of people with disabilities at Lindot and doing some education that this uh, part of this PowerPoint grew out of. Um, first and foremost, uh, when I was looking at who was going to be in the audience, I was thinking, man, is this a sophisticated audience. So I threw out the first PowerPoint that I had, and I did it again. Um, one thing that I really want to ask you all, what's the big deal? Why don't people with disabilities get a job? Give me some answers, please. Why, why, why are we having this conversation? Sherry? Employers are not educated. Okay. Fear of rejection. Okay. Scared. Scared. They think accommodations are too costly. And I think all of that is, is part of the picture as we're talking about this. Let me see how well I can do this. Um, okay, show you the button. Up and down. So okay. That's why I just up and down. Oh. Um, the way I'm going to do this PowerPoint is very briefly go over what is a disability. Because I think there is a lot of misconception <coughs> and a lot of people have touched it. Um, you know, a disability many times is what you know. Is it a person that uses a wheelchair? Is it a person who has a hearing impairment? Is it a person who is blind? Is it a silent disability? Um, one other piece is Vocational Rehabilitation Services, who I work with, we have a sister agency called State Services for the Blind, and they work specifically with individuals with visual impairment, but we work hand in hand with them. So afterwards, I can always give you contacts for them, but um, we can we work real closely together as far as uh, employment. Um, but what is a disability? A physical or mental impairment that um, substantially limits one of major parts of um, major life activities, person who has a record of this. Um, I think a disability, I think of diversity. It's a civil rights issue. It's this broad spectrum kind of thing. Recently, um, and I'm sure many of you will, will recognize this name, uh, the Honorable uh, Donovan Frank, um, who is a US uh, uh, federal uh, judge in Minnesota, uh, went to Washington, D.C., and he had one objective, to get the word disability in language at the federal court to acknowledge it. Much like Kathy was saying, that person in the back of the room, you know, we're talking about race, we're talking about women, disabilities, disabilities. Uh, I've been in more meetings where people with disabilities do not get acknowledged as part of that diversity. And by gosh, by darn, you know, people with disabilities are women, they're African American, they're Asian. It cuts across every spectrum of our society. Uh, let's talk some numbers. Okay. Oh, I, I see, Marcy. Uh oh, great. Uh, now she can some tricks in here to see how well I can do this. Um, one in five people uh, have a disability. I mean, as I said, it's what your perception is. Um, as we age, one in three of us are going to have a disability. Man, I, I, I'm feeling more disabled every day some days as I get older. Um, fewer than 15% of people uh, are born with a disability. Yeah, I think people have they, they, those, all those misconceptions about what a disability is. Uh, there's, um, there recently, last Sunday, there was an article in the paper, and it was talking about disability insurance. I just thought it was fascinating because it was said, if you're 20 years old today, um, there's a one in a four chance that you'll have a disability by the age you're 67 uh, that will last more than a year. That's a greater chance than dying in that thing. And that, that, for, for, for some reason to me that, that just put everything into perspective of how uh, pronounced um, you know, the, the occurrence of disability is. Um, Disability isn't many times just an isolated thing. It isn't like you just have one thing. There's a lot of intersections between different parts of a disability. 
Um, and just looking at the different kinds of disability, asthma, arthritis, diabetes, cancer, mental health, hearing loss, uh, ED, uh, autism spectrum, MS, and this is just a few of them. You know, the, the gamut is great when you talk about disability. So what do we call people with disabilities? Uh, I think a lot of times we get really concerned about political correctness. And what do we call them? We call them brothers, we call them sisters, we call them mothers. We call, a disability is only one prong of who that individual is. They have all these other wants, dreams, perspectives of life, and that disability is one prong of who they are. Not all disabilities <laughs> are viewed equally by, by society. Uh, some are hidden, some are visible or intellectual. Um, when we talk about disclosures, um, Cindy was talking about the, the process of disclosure. People in our society are afraid to disclose many times their disability. Why? Because they have been discriminated against. Um, if you roll into a room in a wheelchair, you've disclosed your disability. If I'm talking to, I work with a lot of state agencies, I work with a lot of businesses, if they hear my name, I de facto disclose that person has a disability by them just hearing my name because they know what I do. Um, so the, the disclosure is a huge piece. When Cindy is talking about uh, the Resumex system, um, those two pieces of paper, the application process, which is electronic, and the affirmative actions get split off. The managers don't see that, that that person has a disability. Um, I always, always encourage my candidates, do you have a disability? Yes, check it um, I, on that, that process. Because what my job is, is to work with a lot of these state agencies to increase those numbers for people with disabilities. I've actually gotten people, jobs at the state, and I've worked with the HR people and gotten them in, and it came to the point where they're filling out paperwork and they check, no, I don't have a disability. I get a call from the HR director going, What's the yeah, other chance that she does, but she just didn't want to put on the piece of paper, you know? Uh, but, they, you know, they, that's a huge uh, piece of um, uh, the, the process. Uh, Americans with this disability are the largest and fastest growing minority group with an annual spending power of $220 billion. Um, in your packets, there's a couple different things. Um, there's the um, State Rehab Council report, and Mr. Bangsberg in the back room, who's the chair of that, has some wonderful words of wisdom in there for you. Um, there's also a piece from uh, Deed that um, basically um, has a lot of statistics in there. And I was reading that this morning, and there it says it's $1.5 trillion in discretionary income as far as people with disabilities. However we cut it, Folks with disabilities are a huge economic um, and political power to deal with. Uh, remember that disability is uh, the only minority group that you can join at any time. <laughs>